And hello, Savannah. Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning into Real Estate Real Talk on this Wednesday, May 30th, 2018. You are listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM. WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. You have just tuned into Real Estate Real Talk. And before I get started with the show, I just wanted to let you know that the viewpoints expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of WRUU, its license holder, or its staff. As I always say, I have a lot of opinions on the show, so I just want to make sure everybody knows we have a little disclaimer here. And it is 12.07 p.m., so you have just reached and passed the middle point of Wednesday, which means everything will just get better from now on, and the weekend is in sight. I am so glad that you have tuned in. Now, on today's show, we are continuing to talk about home buying and home buying tips for really the everyday home buyer. I know my show is more about real estate investing, but don't worry, I'm going to give you a little bit of spill on that as well, my little two cents worth, I guess. And my information and a lot of the content of my last couple shows in this one is actually coming from a book called Home Buying for Dummies. It's uh, the third edition by Eric Tyson and Ray Brown. It's my 99 cent copy that I picked up from a local Goodwill a long time ago and then I'm finally getting a chance to read a little bit and there's some really, really good information in there. So I wanted to share that with you, kind of give my two cents worth, give you a little bit of information about whether it's accurate what's in there even, and also um, kind of answering your questions if you have any. So what I'm going to do is, um, oh, today's topic will be on selecting a mortgage. So we're going to be talking about mortgages, and um, we might have to split this actually up into two shows because there's just a lot of information about mortgages and things that you need to consider before you select the property proper one. So what I will do right now is I will turn on my live Facebook cam on my Facebook site, Julia M. Spencer. You can see me in person and live. We are broadcasting live actually here from near Troop Square in downtown Savannah. So if you have any questions related to that topic, send them to me on my live Facebook feed there and I'll try to answer them during the show. And before that, I'm going to, however, play you a song it is by um, by a newer band, older song by a newer band. It's a little bit of a cover, so here it goes. And that was Weezer, actually, with the song called Africa. It's an old Toto cover. Yeah, that was actually a cover. It was so loud. When a first friend of mine posted that on Facebook yesterday, I thought I had to play it here today as my starting song. And uh, thanks for having tuned into Real Estate Real Talk here with Julia M. Spencer. Thanks for being here with me on Wednesday afternoon. Today, we're going to be talking about how to select a mortgage if you are a individual home buyer. And I'm going to give my two cents, of course, of whether or not the information that I got from this book, Home Buying for Dummies, is actually accurate in real life and whether it actually applies. It's actually a really good book. And um, it is the third edition from um, Eric Tyson and Ray Brown are the authors. And I've been kind of studying it and making my notes. I have a lot of uh, highlighting, highlighted stuff here in this book. So I'm going to kind of summarize it for you here on the show. And um, today's topic we're going to be talking about is how to select the mortgage. So most of us need to take out a mortgage to buy a home for the simple reason that doing so is the only way we can afford to buy a home that meets our needs. So in this chapter, I think it's chapter six that I'm talking about this time, is basically it kind of talks about mortgages. So what is a mortgage? A mortgage is nothing more than a loan that you obtain to close the gap between the cash you have for a down payment and the purchase price of the home. So um, it's basically just a loan. It's just a fancy name for a loan, I guess. And you do, you are required um, to make monthly payments and they are usually comprised of interest and principal. Um, the book doesn't mention this, but a lot of times your taxes and uh, your insurance and sometimes HOA fees and condo fees are in that payment as well, depending on your state and your location. Um, you can still, as of this day, get mortgages without a down payment, but you have to be able to qualify for a VA mortgage. 
it's kind of just always been that way that um, people that have served in the military and um, are have special privileges to get better better kinds of mortgages. So um, that's always a good thing. Still have to pay for the closing costs. We're going to talk about that here in a bit. But um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about how to select a proper mortgage. So the one thing that I always mention to everybody is also mentioned in this book is the fact that if you take on a mortgage that you will be paying over life of the loan, you will pay um, more interest than your actual loan is because the loan is just so extremely long usually. Anywhere between um, 15 to 30 years, there's actually mortgages that are 40 years I've very rarely seen some that are 10 years, but at least 15 to f to 30 years, that's the usual going rate. So there's a really good example right here in this book that I actually wanted to mention here a little bit, is that suppose that you borrow a um, home, or you borrow $144,000 for a home, and you contribute $36,000 from your savings as a down payment to purchase this home that's $180,000. So... Um, Let's say you borrow that 144000 with a 30-year fixed mortgage at 7%. By the way, the book here states 7%. That's, that's really high. Right now, our interest rates are super low. So um, the, just bear with me here with, for calculation purposes here. So you're going to be paying over $200,000. In fact, precisely $200,000 thousand eight hundred ninety two dollars in interest charges alone over the life of your loan um, and that's a lot of interest but um, it's also actually more than your purchase price of your original amount which was a hundred and forty four thousand so um, so that's kind of like what you have to bear in mind when you get a mortgage of course it's always better to buy a home with cash but you know most of us can't do that so um if you are in that boat, like most of us, and you have to get a mortgage, the question then becomes what kind of mortgage to get. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So let's talk about um, fixed mortgages and adjustable mortgages. So what is what is the actual difference here? And what's it even matter? So we're going to talk about that. First off, let's, um, let's just distinguish the two, fixed and adjustable mortgages. Um, before adjustable rate mortgages came into being, only fixed rate mortgages existed. So usually they were issued, as I already mentioned, for 15 to 30 year periods, um, fixed rate mortgages, as the name suggests. And the interest rate is basically fixed. It's unchanging during that entire life of the loan. So if you if you're one of those people <laughs> that likes, for example, your favorite television show airing at the same time every day, you probably will like fixed rate mortgages. And then there's the other kind of mortgage, and that one is the adjustable rate mortgage. And they actually call them ARMS for short, for adjustable rate mortgage. And um, they have actually interest rates that adjust uh, sometimes between 6 to 12 months or so. But it may change as frequently as every month. So um, the interest rate on an arm is primarily determined by what's happening overall to interest rates. I'm not sure if we're going to get this to this on this show, but I'm going to talk later on a little bit of what actually influences those changes in those interest rates. So if you liked change, you may be interested in an interest uh, in a mortgage that has an adjustable interest rate. But now. Another thing that has come into the market besides those two fixed and adjustable are actually also hybrid loans. So if um, it basically lenders sometimes call them intermediate arms as well. So what happens is that the lender will offer you a fixed rate for an initial amount of time could be three, five, seven, or even 10 years. And then after that, the loan converts to an arm to a, an adjustable rate mortgage. And they, then it, it adjusts every six to 12 months. And some, some just have one adjustment. It just depends. So this is what I usually see. This is kind of like if you plan to to basically flip or sell or refinance within those first couple of um, fixed rate um, teaser rates that you'll get in the beginning of this hybrid loan. That's, that might be a good loan for you, one of those hybrid loans. 
But you have to be very sure that you can actually proceed with what you're planning after that initial raid is done and you, you pre-plan for the future. It's a little bit risky, of course. And then we have yet another type of mortgage. Am I confusing you yet? I hope you're still with me. So we have another type, and that is called the interest-only mortgage. And um, interest-only loan, basically. So basically, um, you have a... Um, a loan where the you you get actually really really cheap rate. So you're basically paying you're not paying anything on the principal at all at all. You're just paying the interest to the lender, and it's it's very very risky. And also you're not really paying down your your home, which is kind of like the purpose of you purchasing a home. If you're getting an interest only mortgage, it's kind of like renting. So I kind of always advise of away from that. Um, and also, usually with those interest-only mortgages, at some de- predetermined point down the road, it could be three, five, seven, or ten years, repayment of the principal does begin, and the monthly loan payment amount takes a significant jump at that time. That could be anywhere from 20, 30, or 40 percent or more, and that's kind of where the big problem is with these loans. Some borrowers are just financially unprepared for those much higher payments and in the worst cases the loans are actually balloon loans in disguise and um, let's talk a little bit about balloon loans because that's one that I'm I have a really big pet peeve with so one type of mortgage known as a balloon loan appears um, to um, kind of look like a hybrid loan actually the interest rate is fixed for example for five, seven, or ten years, and then there's a big then. (laughs) At that time, the whole entire balance is due. So basically, you must pay off the entire loan after that initial period. So a lot of borrowers actually attracted to these loans for the same reason that they're attracted to hybrid or ARM loans. And because balloon loans start at a lower interest rate than do fixed rate mortgages, um, Borrowers are initially very interested in those, and so they're kind of like seduced into such loans. Um, I don't really like balloon loans. The book here also doesn't really like them. So, but um, it's kind of like the lo- the name suggests they can they can really blow up in your face, really much, pretty much. In um in re- in the real estate trade, balloon loans are actually also called bullet loans, and that just means that if the loan comes due during a period of high mortgage rates. Industry people say it's like hit, getting hit by a bullet because um, you won't be able to refinance is, or it's going to be very difficult or expensive. And um, taking a balloon loan may be a financially hazardous short-term solution to your long-term financing needs. So the only one circumstance that I would believe that a balloon loan may be okay to consider is if you absolutely must have one particular property and that is the only option for you to get financing for it. Um, If you do get a balloon loan, my recommendation, same recommendation in this book is to try to get the term for as long as possible. So try to get it for seven years and maybe even 10 years, at least then you'll have a little bit of a leeway because in that time frame, your property can appreciate enough to make up the difference that you would have to pay in getting a higher interest loan or um, having to refinance and paying for the financing costs again. So that is kind of my idea on, um, I'm kind of just looking through this book here for you, kind of giving you a really, really good um, overview of what they're talking about here. So how do you how do you then make a decision about whether you should do a get a fixed or an adjustable um, mortgage loan? Um, so let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons here. You actually are the one who's best positioned to make the call as to whether you should get a fixed or adjustable loan and um, whether it matches your situation and desires. Now, me as a real estate investor, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background here. I actually have never gotten an adjustable rate mortgage. All my mortgages have been um, fixed rate, which is really, really what's worked for me really well. However, it has backfired 
one time, actually several, two times. And I'm going to talk about that here in a minute as well. Um, let's talk about fixed rate mortgages. I'm going to play you a little bit of a break song. And um, yeah, I'll be right back. Let's talk about uh, some fixed rate mortgage advantages and disadvantages after my break here. WRUU listeners like you crave exploration and discovery. That's how we can offer your business or organization a unique way to separate your name from the clutter inherent in commercial radio advertising. Underwriting on non-commercial WRUU will make your name stand out because we only allow a limited number of sponsorships per hour, and your message will be reaching listeners who are actively engaged in programs that demand their attention. Let our team build a customized plan to meet your marketing goals by linking your name to our unique music and talk programs. For more information, email underwriting at WRUU.org. The Swan Song, Tybee Island's final prom, is Saturday, July 14th from 7 to 11 p.m. at Tybee American Legion Hall. The prom benefits the Island's Feral Cat Project. Entertainment includes live music from the girlfriends and the last crowning of the Tybee Prom King and Queen. For more information, 912-484-7355. WRUU 107.5 FM is all-volunteer community radio. Tune in this afternoon. From 3 to 4, Rob Hessler and David Laughlin present Art on the Air, an interview program dedicated to the visual arts in Savannah. From 4 to 6, Louis Clausey and Matthew Adams present That Old Savannah Magic, a variety show featuring Savannah history, radio theater, interviews, and music. From 6 to 7, Barbara Humphreys and Albert Strickland present Voices of Resistance, giving voice to justice and peace activists with no other voice in the Savannah media. Find our full schedule at WRUU.org. And thanks for having stuck with me here during my break for Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. And happy Wednesday to you all. We're talking about mortgages this week on my show and I'm going to talk a little bit about fixed rate mortgages and adjustable rate mortgages and the first one I'm going to discuss are fixed rate mortgages. So basically when you get a fixed rate mortgage um, the interest rate doesn't vary and that should be a good thing. So you always know what your monthly payment is going to be for the most part, of course, sometimes the payment does adjust in, in case the taxes go up or the insurance goes up, which is a lot of times calculated into that payment. So budgeting and planning are a lot easier. But um, you actually, and a lot of people don't know this, you'll pay premium for that and you will get a higher interest rate from the get-go. Um, a lot of people don't know this. I actually didn't know this until very recently. Um, so the other thing too, that is a disadvantage of having a fixed rate mortgage is the fact that, um, in addition to paying a premium interest rate, when you take the loan out, another, um, drawback is basically that if the fixed rates, um, if the, uh, interest rates on mortgages fall significantly after you take out the mortgage, you face the risk basically of being stranded with that expensive mortgage. And that could happen um, maybe because, first off, the interest rate goes down. And also it could be when you can't refinance to a lower rate because maybe your financial situation has, has changed for the worse. And, um, and even if you do qualify to refinance, financing takes a lot of time. It's aggravational. <laughs> or aggravating, I should say, and it costs a lot of money for a lot of the fees that go with um, trying to get a new mortgage. And this actually has happened to me, has happened to me several times when I've gotten really good fixed rate mortgages and then the interest rate went down by 1% to 2% and uh, new mortgage companies kept approaching me, new lenders, and they kept saying, hey, you want to refinance? You want to refinance? And I'm like, well, I just got this loan like three years ago. I'm not going to refinance now. I'm going to lose all this money, thousands of dollars I spent on closing costs now and have to pay that again. 
And a lot of the lenders actually th- at that point said, well, we, we'll just finance the closing costs into your new loan um, as long as the property appraises for the whole amount. And um, the rate is going to be significantly lower. And so several times I have refinanced the fixed rate mortgage. And what I should have done instead, I should have gotten an adjustable mortgage instead. And then I wouldn't have had to go, go through all of that. And of course, our interest rates here in the United States have been just really, really low for many, many years now. It's just been such a great time to get financing. So um, yeah, back in the day, wasn't a good time to get a fixed rate mortgage. Now it is. That That's my two cents worth here from, from Julia M. Spencer's investment advice here. Now, so there's a couple more um, minor drawbacks, too, that you need to be aware of if you get a fixed rate mortgage. So if you sell your house before you're paying off that mortgage, your buyers probably won't be able to assume that mortgage. So um, that basically just means um, assuming a loan. It basically means the ability to pass your loan on to the next buyer. And in real estate talk, the next buyer basically assumes your loan. You can be it can be useful if you're forced to sell during, for example, really really high interest rates. That, for example, occurred in the early 1980s. And um, also, fixed rate mortgages have, have sometimes prepayment penalties. Now, um, what are prepayment penalties? What do you, what is that? So. Um, I personally believe, and the book um, agrees with me on that, is to avoid prepayment penalties at all costs. Some mortgages come with a provision that penalizes you for paying off the loan balance faster. Such penalties can amount to as much as several percentage points of the amount of the mortgage balance that is paid off early. So when you pay off a mortgage early because you sold the property or because you want to refinance the loan, take advantage of lower interest rates, some lenders won't enforce their loans prepayment penalties as long as they get to make the new mortgage. So even though, even so, you you have, you kind of financially tied unless you go through the same lender. So in many states also, uh, there is a li- limitation on the duration and the amount of prepayment penalties that lenders may charge. Uh, especially for mortgages on owner-occupied residential property. So the only way to really know whether a loan has a prepayment penalty is to ask and to carefully review the federal truth in lending disclosure and the promissory note that the mortgage lender provides to you. And they will provide this to you prior to you signing and going to closing. So uh, I know it's a lot of paperwork. You probably get hundreds and hundreds of papers to look at, to read, and to Uh, discuss with your other person that you're getting this loan with if you're not the only person on the loan and um, you basically have to really really read it and that's that what it comes down to if you blindly just sign everything at a closing you might be in for a surprise and that is the goal of my show here to kind of help you along with this process Um, so in any case let's talk about adjustable rate mortgages let's um If the interest rate fluctuates, so does your monthly payment on an adjustable rate mortgage. And therein lies the risk because a mortgage payment is likely to be a big monthly expense for you. An adjustable rate mortgage that's adjusting upward may actually wreak havoc with your budget. Um, I can't tell you anything from my experience on an adjustable rate mortgage because I've never had one. But um, if you are out there listening and you have one and you have some good or bad news to report and you have an arm, an adjustable rate mortgage, just contact me. You can always reach me at realestate at juliamspencer.com. I love getting your emails, so go ahead and send them. So um, why would people then get adjustable rate mortgages, you may ask? Well, some people are just kind of stretching themselves. That's kind of like the first time home buyers. They want to trade up. They want to get an expensive home. They are in the process of maybe impressing their neighbors or they have a growing family. You know, there's a really legitimate reason to get a bigger, better, more expensive home or, you know, maybe live in a better school district. It could be any number of reasons. Um, But some home buyers who can actually qualify for either an adjustable rate or a fixed rate mortgage of the same size have a choice. 
and choose the fluctuating adjustable mortgage rate. And you may ask why. Well, because they may actually save themselves money and in the form of smaller total interest charges with um, an adjustable rate loan rather than a fixed rate loan. So because you accept the risk of a possible increase in interest rates, mortgage lenders cut you a little slack. So the initial interest rate, also sometimes referred to as the teaser rate on an adjustable, should be less than initial interest rate on a compatible, compatible fixed rate loan. So let me just pass that by you one more time. If you have the choice and you qualify for a fixed rate and an adjustable rate, um, if already the the rate of the um, ad adjustable is the same as the fixed rate one, just go with fixed rate one. But if the adjustable is much lower, then you may want to consider taking the adjustable rate. So the another advantage of an ARM, an adjustable rate mortgage, is that if you purchase your home during a time of high interest rates, you can start paying your mortgage with the official artificially depressed initial interest rate. So then should interest rates subsequently decline, you can enjoy the benefits of lower rates without refinancing. And let me just tell you, refinancing is a big expense. You don't just do that once every year, every other year. If you ever have done the credit card game, I have, um, I have actually several times... Um, oh technical difficulties here. <laughs> I actually have several times uh, refinanced credit cards because um, I would get these teaser rates for uh, 0% for a certain amount of time or maybe a year if I refinanced my higher credit card interest to a lower rate. And I'd, I would do that and there's usually not much cost associated with that. Sometimes the transfer fees are waived as well. Very easy with credit cards, not that easy with mortgages. If you do it with mortgages, you got to pay all these fees. I'm going to talk about these fees here in a moment. But um, closing costs are very significant, very expensive usually. So don't just uh, think that you can just refinance anytime. It's not an easy process to get a mortgage. In fact, getting uh, like a car loan or a credit card or another consumer loan or anything else is just astronomically cheaper than um, getting a mortgage. And case in point, I actually um, got a car uh, back, I want to say it was like 15 years ago. It was a very, very expensive car. It was one of my, um, a sports car I got. I had to show off a little bit, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but it was a very expensive car and it cost just as much as one of my um, lower end houses that I bought at the same time. And I was able to get the financing for the car within, I don't know, maybe like two hours at the car dealership. And I was able to drive the car back home uh, while as the mortgage and the application for the mortgage and doing all the paperwork and the runaround and getting all my pieces of information together that the lender and the underwriter asked for took took a good 30 days. I mean, and it was the same amount for the loan. Just one was for a house and the other one was for a car. So refinancing, don't count on it. It's expensive. It takes a lot of time and it's a lot of hassle. So let's see. What else? Um, uh, the downside, another downside to an adjustable rate loan is that if interest rates in general rise, your loan's interest and monthly payment will likely rise too. So during most time periods, if rates rise more than 1% or 2% and stay elevated, then an adjustable rate loan is likely to cost you more than a fixed rate loan. So um, they kind of have to stay within the same area there. So you want to... You wanna, um, kind of really consider or kind of watch what the interest rates are doing. And the way to watch them is something I'm going to talk. Hopefully I can get to it on this show. If not, I will definitely discuss that on my future shows of how adjustable um, interest rates are calculated and what goes into that. Um, and again, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. And I am just giving you a little bit of a recap of some of this information in this book that I purchased. It's called Home Buying for Dummies. I kind of wanted to read it. It said it was a reference for, for the rest of us. I always need a reference. Book is the third edition by uh, written by Eric Tyson and Ray Brown. And I'm kind of giving you a little bit my summary and my two cents worth on on that particular book and some of the information contained in it. So 
Let's see. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, adjustable rate mortgages before we take a break here. Um, when considering an ARM, an adjustable rate mortgage, you absolutely positively must understand what rising interest rates and therefore rising monthly mortgage payment would do to your personal finances. So consider taking an ARM only if you can answer all of the following questions in the affirmative. This is directly from this book, so I'm going to read them to you here. Is your monthly budget such that you can afford higher mortgage payments and still accomplish other financial goals that are important to you, such as saving for retirement? Um, do you have an emergency reserve equal to at least six months of living expenses that you can tap into to make the potentially higher monthly mortgage payments? Can you afford the highest payment allowed on the adjustable rate mortgage? And um, let me just caveat that the mortgage lender can tell you the highest possible monthly payment, which is the payment that you would owe if the interest rate on your arm went up to the lifetime interest cap allowed on the loan. So it's not like the mortgage payment will go up indefinitely and you suddenly owe $10,000 a month on your house. It's not like that. Uh, most arms carry, um, they have something like a... Um, a limit to a basic cap and um, you would definitely want to make sure that you have an adjustable rate mortgage with a cap. A typical cap is usually 2% per year and 6% over the life of the loan and um, you definitely again must read in the paperwork provided by the lender what the cap is, it's going to be in your truth and lending disclosure in the beginning that you get to look at and read. And let's talk about some of the other questions that you must answer in the affirmative if you're considering to get an adjustable rate mortgage. If you're stretching to borrow near the maximum the lender allows or an amount that will test the limits of your budget, are your job and income stable? Um, if you expect to be having children in the future, have you considered that your household expenses will rise and your income may fall with the arrival of those little bundles of joy? Good question. Actually, it will. So you need to consider it. <laughs> your expenses will rise. And last but not least, can you handle the psychological stress of changing interest rates and mortgage payments? Um, this is kind of the last point is really kind of the reason why I've kind of steered away from all all. Um, adjustable rate mortgages that I've ever was offered. I kind of stuck with the fixed rate. Um, it's a little bit of a um, pay, pay off that I had to consider, basically. I had to consider to pay a higher interest rate, and I had to consider the fact that I kind of was stuck with that higher interest rate over the years. And in a couple instances, I was able to refinance, so that was good. But I kind of played it safe. I, I tend to, with such high loan amounts that you'll have to take out, on one of the most expensive things you'll ever buy in your life, I kind of wanted to stay stable and ensure that my family had a place to live. So that was always a good thing. Now, um, if you're fiscally positioned to take on the financial risk inherent to an adjustable rate mortgage, um, however, do you consider taking one? Um, the odds are you're going to save money in the form of lower interest charges and payments with an arm, but your interest rate starts lower already to begin with and generally stays lower if the overall level of interest rates doesn't change. Even if rates do go up, as they are sometimes prone to do, they will surely come back down. So if you can stick with your arm through times of high and low interest rates, you will come ahead. That is the advice right here um, from this book, um, Home Buying for Dummies third edition that I'm kind of reading and paraphrasing, kind of summarizing for you, giving my two cents worth as well. And uh, we have uh, maybe about 13 minutes or so here left in my hour. We're going to talk a little bit more about mortgages and we're going to talk, let's see, about short-term versus long-term interest rates, which might be another interesting thing for you to uh, consider. But we're going to do that after a little tiny break, and I'll be right back after this. And that was Alex Cameron with the song Running Out of Luck. Uh, one of the performers of one of our Savannah Stopover Music Festivals, I believe it was last year or the year before. 
And you are listening to Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. Thanks for having tuned in again on this Wednesday afternoon. Welcome. And uh, we have only a few more minutes left. And today we were talking about mortgages, whether or not you should select a fixed rate mortgage or an adjustable rate mortgage, an arm mortgage and the differences between the two. And I want to add a little bit more information about that before I get off the air here for this afternoon's Jazz Brunch, which comes after this show hosted by Dave Lake. I'm going to talk a little bit about short-term versus long-term interest rates. So when choosing between an adjustable rate mortgage and a fixed rate mortgage, many people don't realize that they're making a choice between a mortgage on which the interest rate is determined by either short-term or long-term interest rates. And... Um, what does that even mean? So when a mortgage lender quotes an interest rate for a particular type of loan, he should specify in terms of how many years until the loan is completely paid off uh, the length of the loan. So most of the time, borrowers must pay a higher interest rate to borrow money for a longer period of time. Conversely, borrowers generally pay a lower rate of interest for shorter term loans. Well, the interest rates that are used to determine most adjustable rate mortgages are short-term interest rates, whereas fixed rate mortgage interest rates are dictated by long-term interest rates. So during most time periods, long-term interest rates have been higher than short-term rates because of the greater risk the lender accepts in committing to a long-term rate. Makes sense, right? So, of course, then it stands to reason, therefore, that when little difference exists in the market level of short-term and long-term interest rates, the rates of a fixed-rate mortgage shouldn't be all that different from the rates of an adjustable-rate mortgage. So, adjustables appear less attractive and fixed-rate mortgages appear more alluring. But on the other hand, when short-term interest rates are significantly lower than long-term interest rates, Adjustable rate mortgages should be available at rates a good deal lower than rates for fixed rate loans. So all things equal, adjustables appear more attractive during such time periods and save you more money during the early years of your loan. So just consider that, that you're actually making a decision between the kind of interest rate that you're selecting when you select the kind of loan, a fixed or an adjustable. So... Let's talk just for the very last moment here, for my last few minutes here. I'm not sure if my video here on Facebook is coming through. If it is not, do not worry because uh, the show will be um, published on YouTube later on and also on the WRUU.org website. So how long do you expect to stay in the home and mortgage is another thing that you do need to consider. If you don't plan or expect to stay in your home for a long time, you should consider an arm. So saving money on interest charges for most adjustables is usually guarante guaranteed in the first two to three years because an arm starts at a lower interest rate than a fixed rate loan does, as I just mentioned, discussed. So if you're reasonably certain that you'll hold on to your home for fewer than five years, you should come out ahead with an adjustable. However, you should also ask yourself why you're going to um, uh, buy a home at all if you're going to be selling it soon or leaving soon. So just keep that in mind. You know, I'm not going to try to make your mind up here for you, but s think about these things. That's kind of like the thought process that you have to follow in order to make the correct and the right decision for you. Now, if you expect to hold onto your home and mortgage for a long time, more than five to seven years, a fixed rate loan may make more sense, especially when you're not in a position to withstand the fluctuating monthly payments that come with an arm. So, and if you're somewhere in the intermediate area expecting to stay seven to 10 years maybe, then think of a hybrid loan that I talked about earlier. So if you're still stuck on a fence, go with a fixed rate loan. A fixed rate um, loan is financially safer than an arm and it's also easier to shop for. So I hope this was very informational to you. This book is actually quite amazing. I'm very proud, I mean, glad that I picked it up good that I can uh, kind of read a little bit here for you on the air. Uh, much, much easier to listen to it on the air than reading it. Honestly, um, I'm not a big book reader. I like audiobooks. I like listening to people. And so um, I'm 
giving you the benefit here to benefit from my reading skills by listening to me instead. So I hope this was informational for you. Kind of my Facebook feed died halfway through the show, but do not despair. The show will be available here in the near future. Um, Let's see. What else did I want to say? We have... um, basically discuss mortgages and I wanted to just mention briefly that you can also always reach me by emailing me at real estate at julia m spencer.com uh, my show is real estate real talk I primarily discuss real estate and real estate investing the last couple of shows I'm kind of focusing more on the personal home buyer and um I will also be hosting a music show on June 3rd from 10 p.m. till midnight. It's kind of like a late hour. And the next show on this station right here on WRUU will be Jazz Brunch hosted by Dave Lake. And please send me comments, questions, suggestions. Or if you want me to make another show about a topic, feel free to suggest that topic to me. I look forward to hear all your emails and all your comments and questions. And I'm going to sign off here with a song by Wolfsheim, Once in a Lifetime. And I hope you have an awesome, awesome, fabulous rest of your Wednesday and week. Happy investing, and I hope you can tune in again next week. Um, Bye, everyone. And you're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings. Community Radio with Global Soul. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliammspencer.com.